Hi everyone, welcome to this video. I'm gonna show you how to use a Gadget Classic Pro with a boost box installed on it. Obviously, first thing first, we need to turn on the machine, let it to heat up for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna speed this up on the video. Uh, just a quick uh, brief information about uh, the Classic Pro with the boost box. The main difference, you have a twin switch installed on this one, however, when installing the boost box you could either leave the original switch in place if you are not happy with the decals uh, but that will come with some drawbacks in regards of intershot, temp surfing and uh, the steam boost quick run through on the boost box obviously you have your PID, it's a generic PID I mean the menu wise and the display wise however it is customized internally uh, so I'm not going to talk about that a lot because there are plenty of content on YouTube. Uh, Damien has a brilliant video on how to set up the menu. I will link that in the description. Uh, we have a, a pressure gauge. It is a glycerin filled uh, gauge, stainless steel. Tracks pressure in the brew group uh, from 0 to 11 bars. We have the dimmer, the flow control dimmer, which we could control the pump output with <coughs> and we also have a switch at the back to turn on the LED lights to blow the water as uh, yeah on top of that the increase in height is about five centimeter well it is exactly five centimeter uh, the steam boost is uh, it, it's quite kind of the inverse of intershot time surfing <laughs> normally when you are on steam mode uh, what happens you bypass in the uh, brew thermostat so the steam thermostat is going to be the only uh, in charge uh, for the temperature management so you will got a much higher temperature in the boiler and uh, what also happens obviously the solenoid valve is going to be shut off the actual boiler is only 80 ccm so it is a really tiny boiler so once you start steaming you only have a certain amount of time while you have a, an impressive steam pressure and uh, once that tiny boiler runs out of liquid well, or steam then uh, you will have loss of pressure and loss of uh, steam output and uh, that is a kind of drawback of the Gadget Classic but uh, what the steam boost does while you are steaming you can turn on the pump and set the flow control dimmer to a low setting to about let's say nine o'clock or ten o'clock uh, about 30 uh, 30 percent and what that will do that will slowly uh, replenish the water content of the boiler so your boiler will never run out of liquid and what it also does it also pressurizes the actual boiler so it, it adds a, a tiny bit of pressure boost to your steaming if you are using steam boost what you do you hit the steam temperature you wait for the temperature to reach your target which is about 140 150 celsius normally for steam boosting i do recommend to increase the steam temperature a tiny bit about 5 to 10 uh, celsius it's just to compensate for the again compensate for the cold water intake and once you reach the, your desired temperature you also see on the pressure gauge the built up pressure in the boiler which is really handy so you the pressure gauge is it only shows the the actual uh, brew uh, brew pressure but it only indicates the the steam boiler pressure and uh, once you are ready for steaming hit the brew button at a low dimmer setting and open the steam valve and you will be able to adjust your pump regarding these two informations so you will see the loss of pressure and you will see the dynamic pressure what what you have in the boiler while you are steaming and you also see the temperature changes obviously if the temperature drops drops too much that means you add in the water too quickly so it, it cools the boiler down too much and you won't have a uh, hot enough steam but if you have a loss of pressure too quickly while the temperature is uh, kind of linear that means you're not adding enough water and you will uh, notice a drop of pressure quite quickly so once you could uh, tune these in it takes some time it takes uh, some practice shots 
But once you dialed in your steam boost, what you will have, you can turn on your steam, you can leave your machine there, come back in an hour, and it will steam in the same way, with the same powerful steam output. It will never run out, your boiler getting replenished continuously, meanwhile maintaining an ideal temperature for the steam. I will show this at the end of this video. Oh, let's set the steam temperature a bit higher. Yeah, I just increased it by 10 Celsius, so it is set to 147 now but there is also an 8 celsius offset between the thermal on the boiler where your thermostat or your uh, temperature probe is attached uh, there is an 8 celsius offset between that temperature and the actual uh, water output of the group head so hence when i set it to 147 uh, your, the actual temperature probe gonna read 155. It is worth to mention you can only increase the temperature to a certain point as you do have a temperature fuse on top of your boiler. Once that reaches 184 Celsius, it will trip and your machine gonna switch off until you replace that fuse. So I, I would say 155 is probably the ideal maximum setting of the steam temperature on the PID if you have that uh, 8 Celsius taken off at the PSB setting. Getting close to the settle temperature, one more thing uh, worth to mention. The actual switch is a tiny bit smaller than your original switch, so it does not line it up. Uh, on this one it doesn't line up at the bottom, but uh, on the ones I'm posting, because this is an old switch, I'm not buying these ones, because the other one I found is equaled, so it has a tiny uh, discrepancy there and the tiny one at the top so it's it's not as visible it only takes a few times when you're using it while you getting used to which which side is for which function and whenever you just if you if you only want to steam as per normal you just switch them at the same time now we are moving on uh, steaming uh, I will not steam milk on it uh, because that won't show uh, the capabilities of the steam boost. Let's turn the machine onto steam first. Yeah, you also need to switch off the solenoid as you don't want uh, water through there. So steam boost is achievable with the, without replacing the switch. The switch is only there for uh, intra-shot temp surfing. Wait for it to heat up. So it reached its uh, target temperature once. Now the temperature is dropping. You're gonna wait for it once it triggers it again. Yes, it did and turn the pump on So the pressure is about 1.4, 1.3 bars, the boiler temperature is settled, so it is between 140 and 130 and 140 Celsius, I mean 140 and 150.
actually still one and a, one and a half bar dropping 1.2 So I think that was enough to get the idea how long you could steam. I do not recommend to steam for this long. Uh, obviously you won't need, you, you probably won't be able to fit such a huge jug underneath the steam one to get enough milk in there, which requires that amount of time. Because as you remember, I did tell you not to operate the pump for more than 60 seconds. That is on a full uh, dimmer setting. But if it, if it uh, is tweaked to a minimal setting, it could run for a few minutes. But I still not recommend to run it for five minutes or more. 